sad and unfortunate phenomenon. We have Pak Budi Isman, the CEO of Business.id and Pro Indonesia Foundation, and also the author of Seven Steps to Reach Your Dream, right here with us. And Pak Budi is also an alumni of the George Washington University, where he earned his master's degree and CEO of multinational companies. Well, Pak Budi, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you, thank you, Kai. So to our audience, um, before we start our interview, this is uh, see today's way of you know easing uh, the, uh, the the health protocols. Well, we're not easing the health protocols, but we're all already vaccinated and in easing the pandemic to the endemic transition. We have started to open our masks when we have our guests over. So, uh, would you, if you may? Sure, that would be good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is great to be able to speak like this again because we can finally be able to, you know, um, see each other's expressions when we speak and specifically, this is a tough topic to talk about. Right, <laughs> right. No, but... Interesting um, one, yeah. <laughs> well, you have an Instagram particularly dedicated to give tips about how to run startups and how to make sure startups, you know, don't fall into bankruptcy. Now, one of the reasons that we've already mentioned in the previous story was that um, there is funding. And Indonesia is a very attractive place to fund new startups, right? Yeah. So just to give you a bit of some data, according to e uh, Economy Report, a Southeast Asia, the 2021 one that was released by Google, Timasek, and Bain and Company, there is a projection of uh, Indonesia's digital economy to reach 70 billion US dollars in the market yeah. and also will reach 146 billion dollars by 2025. Right. Now, um, in the Cento Ventures report, Indonesia is currently head-to-head -head with Singapore as uh, the, some of the biggest investment receivers for startups um, in 2021. And according to these records, 42% of these investments are in, uh, for startups in Indonesia. And these are from investors from all over the world. Right. So how do you see the current startup trend in Indonesia? There is a market for it. There's a lot of attractiveness for it. Um, yeah. How do you see it going? Yeah, maybe it's, as you know also that uh, Indonesia is a very attractive place. Yeah. Not only for startups, I think for many businesses, even conventional businesses, mm -hmm. because of the populations, because of the stable growth of the economy, and also the stable probably political, uh, and also uh, the, the government regime. Now, you know that Indonesia is between the big fourth and fifth probably in the world um, that has many startups. We have more than 2,000 actually startups. Mm -hmm. Now that is an evidence yeah. actually that people uh, believe that uh, Indonesia is one of the best places also to fund and to invest in startups. Now if you look at that, the phenomena of startups since maybe five to ten years ago in Indonesia is growing very fast. Mm -hmm. Steadily, people are investing in Indonesian startup, and many have become unicorns, yep. even decacorns. Yes. Right? Now, this is probably why, if you look at the in the Asian region, the Indonesia is one of probably the biggest um, uh, investment place for uh, startup fundings. Uh, of course, head to head with Singapore. Yeah. Now, and uh, if. If we just see that, the trend until now, the trend is still very good, very positive, and very conducive. However, mm -hmm. uh, recently, of course, you, you look at the data, you see uh, yeah, you know, the, the way uh, the investors now yeah. looking at startups because of the situations globally. They are cautious now, of course, mm -hmm. in terms of trying to invest in startups where they think, you know, uh, they will not probably perform as well as the investors would like to be. So that is the situation right now. Mm. So um, for me, the curiosity is, you know, there is an investment pool. There are a pool of investors that are willing to you know, invest a certain amount, a, a huge amount in Indonesia and yeah. we see that happening, right? Yes. So obviously those layoffs, they're, they're usually caused by a lot of things. Right. Um, but bankruptcy or Many of them, you know, many of them had to do layoffs recently. Yeah. What do you think is the cause behind that? Is that strictly, you know, funding can last you so much? Yes. But how can you, is it the sustainability or is it just because they're changing? What is your take on this? Yeah, there's several factors, of course, uh, that plays uh, uh, into the situations right now. 
Number one, of course, is about the, the global situation. You know, you know, globally in the U.S., if you see the tech companies, you know, their shares are going down. Mm -hmm. And because of that, the inflations around the world, especially in U.S. and Europe, was shooting up, you know. Uh, and therefore, there's a lot of tightness in liquidity. Mm -hmm. And therefore, including the funding, you know, that means that less money, you know, to be spent yeah. in terms of funding. So that's number one. Now, because many of the startup um, has not been able to become profitable, you know, so so many of them depends on the funding and raising the fund to, you know, to fund and mm -hmm. of course to pay for the expenses and the operations. Yeah. So if you look at the way uh, the startups, you know, some of them, you know, uh, really rely on the funding. Their runway uh, may be short, mm -hmm. 12 to 18 months. Now, if they cannot get the funding for the next round, that means they are out of cash flow. Yeah, that's right. Now, that's one of the reasons why maybe they need to scale down. So if they have a fund, for example, they can use usually in the normal situation probably for two years. Mm -hmm. But right now, because of the situations, they need to shorten that. So that means that they need to be more efficient. And Unfortunately, because of startups, especially the digital one, their biggest asset is the people, yeah. and their biggest also investment and expenses is the people. So that is another reason for it. But the other reason that I found, of course, when I talk to other uh, startups that we we known, that many of them, because of the business model they have they tried, yeah. so they're trying to change. They they pivot from the different business model or to their different categories. So that's the other parts of it. So my question is, how long does usually a startup need to be profitable? <laughs> because uh, the question for me is, how, why? I mean, this is my perspective as an investor, which raises questions for me sometimes, is that why would an investor agree to invest if, um, I mean, like, if they don't have a clear, I mean, I know that the global situation is uncalled for because yeah. we did not plan this to happen. Sure. And uh, it's very unfortunate for some particular startups that are currently on the way to becoming supposedly be, uh, profitable that these uh, two years have happened. Yeah. But um, is there any sort of accountability you know what I mean? Because uh, you're okay with one round. Yeah. It is the biggest hope that you know a startup can be profitable within one round, right? Yeah. Because they would have to have the business plan like that. Yeah. So, where do you think is the flaw? How should a startup create a business plan that would at least make them profitable as soon as possible? Because relying on the funding from the beginning will only take you so far. Yeah. Now this is this is why I said you know um, I. I come from a different background, so mm. I used to run conventional business, yeah. multinational conventional business, where we have a dis different set of rules. Yeah. And if you look at the way the startup, especially the digital ones, you know, they have a different ways of looking at it. But basically, it's still the same. Either that is a digital startup, or that is a conventional business. Basically, you need to be profitable. Yeah. Yeah. To be sustainable, so that means. If you have a revenue and you have a cost, you know, if your costs exceed your revenue, it's a minus, yeah. right? Now, if you don't have any other revenues, any other income, that means you need cash flow from funding. Yes. So that's the way, you know, the way they, they run the business because they want what we call fast growth or hyper growth. Mm -hmm. Now, to achieve hyper growth, they, they are willing to sacrifice mm -hmm what we call the bottom line, which yeah, is the yeah. profitability. So in order to get the top line, so that the revenue growth can be 200, 300% a year, yeah. which is in a normal business, conventional business, yes. when you're quite big, that is almost you know, impossible. Impossible and unheard right? of, yes. But in the digital technology and startup, that is possible. So mm. that's why I said, of course, the, the, the fund managers and the venture capitals, you know, they are betting on the future mm -hmm. of the startups. So they need to be exponentially you know, growing very fast. You know, keep it more difficult for other players to come into the market. Mm -hmm. And then after that, they try to get the profitability story. You know, as like, like Facebook, you know, before. Mm. You know, it's all for free, right? Yeah. So how many years do they have uh, people using them for free. 
while they need to have expenses and costs to you know, invest yeah. in there. But they know that if they become so big later on, then they can monetize it, right? Mm. Now, it is, I know that it's a, a little bit more different nowadays, you know, because so many startups also there, which the competition is also yep. there. So you are competing with each other. So that means that right now, I think many uh, fund managers and also the venture capitals are now looking at probably a different way of um, valuing of course, startups now. Maybe they would like now to think about, okay, we still need fast growth, hyper growth, but, but you need to really need to find ways. Yes. And when are you going to be profitable? So that is the key now if you look at uh, maybe in the next uh, couple of months and years. So we have um, one of the indicators that, of course, changes are happening or difficulties start to, you know, startups start to hit the bump, a little bump in the road. Is of course the layoffs that we mentioned before. What do you see about uh, what do you see on the trend um, of layoffs happening in startups across Southeast Asia? Um, and uh, is it is Indonesia still doing quite all right, or um, is it? more severe somewhere else because we are lucky that we are one of the most attractive you know markets Correct. and how but what is it like throughout the region i think compared to other like other global you know regions you know indonesia is still lucky mm. yeah because if you look at the numbers that uh, startups that we have compared yeah. to the numbers that we have and compared to what happens right now i think we are still in a quite a good situation but conscious, cautiously, mm -hmm. we need to look at the way uh, you know um, the startups run their companies. I think there's so many fund managers and also uh, um, like Sequoia, the SoftBank is already warning their uh, investee mm -hmm. you know, to be cautious, yeah. uh, to look at more at the expenses, uh, to be more. Um, I, I would say that aggressiveness in expenses so yeah. that they can last longer mm -hmm. and be more faster to become a sustainable company. So there's already a warning there. Um, so if you look at Indonesia compared to others, I think if you look at all the numbers, Indonesia is still in a better situation, mm. even though we need to be cautious about the situation of the global economy and also the global tech funding situation. Yeah, because uh, startups are well known to be very aggressive at spending in the beginning. Right. They, they hire, the, you know, they, they come up with the best office spaces and they hire the yes. best minds and, right. you know, and, and you know that is the biggest investment, of course. Right. Um, but uh, what would you have, like a couple of tips perhaps for startups that are starting, because you have a whole Instagram dedicated to that. Right. If you may share with us a couple of tips for starting startups uh, to now think in a different model. Yeah. Some startups are only now looking at a different model, right? Yeah. Um, some uh, unicorns and decacorns got lucky yes. because they're already past that phase. Yes. But we're just beginning. Yeah. In this global economical climate, what do you think do they have to uh, do and perhaps plan yeah. ahead to be able to survive basically the next couple of years? I think my, this is just purely my opinion, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the, the startup right now needs to combine the way they think, like the digital startup, like the fast-growing, hyper-growth startups, but they need to also think about the way the normal business is running. Mm. So basically, it's very simple. If you don't have enough revenue, you know, to yeah, to to pay for your expenses, that means that either you need to look at your expenses, you know. Well, you know that sometimes psychologically when people have funding, especially yeah. new startups where yeah. they are not used to have this much money mm -hmm. and they go shopping around, for example, <laughs> right? Yes, yes. Fancy office. Fancy. Yeah. Fantastic. That's good also for the brand. But in the conventional business, you need to really yeah. look at that. So for me, is you know, when you are small, you mm -hmm. do bootstrapping. You yeah. do whatever you have, right? Yeah. So even if you have funding, for me, my, my suggestion is even if you have funding, you really need to find ways to be more efficient mm -hmm. but still can get that growth. So that's number one. Number two, you know, find ways you know, to look at the way you can squeeze all the expenses and a better margin for your services and looking at the way that you can acquire your customers mm -hmm. without spending too much because right now the way you do and acquire your account is only by burning the money yeah giving the discount all the promos 
But if your margin is too small, then you cannot recover it later on. Mm. That is the biggest issue for me. So that's the two most probably important things that they need to think about. Wow, I think it's very interesting because they are supposed to have that mindset from the very beginning on, right? Yeah. Um, and and it, <laughs> that's why I asked because usually investors or fund managers would ask, like, how are you planning to make your businesses profitable? Because yeah. they want to make sure they get a return as well. Right. So um, uh, it baffles me to see your explanation that the trend is that they are big spenders. And it is true, they are realistically big spenders, but not all of them can survive after the funding runs out. Right. So... All right. Um, yeah, so it's, it's very interesting. Uh, so I have one more question. That we heard you already have the goal of creating 1,000 businessmen yeah. and hope that one of them will launch an IPO. Yeah. How yeah. would you reach this goal? I think uh, since 12 years ago after retirement, you know, yeah. I, I uh, keep myself doing a lot of things, especially you know, trying to help the entrepreneurs, uh, young entrepreneurs, startups also, you know, to become a more... Um, sustainable, profitable, and growing company. Yes. So that's why I also help startups, digital startups, but also conventional business. Now the dream is, one of the goal of the founders usually is an IPO. Yeah? You yeah. do a public offering, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. and then that is one of the target that many of the founders uh, wanted to have. So that's why also I set my target also. You know, hopefully in the next five years we have around two to three Ooh. that is ready. In fact, just now, you know, this uh, this morning, you know, uh, we went around several uh, investment bankers because we are preparing you know, one or two of the startups and also uh, the businesses that I help uh, to prepare for the IPO. Before we go, I'm always curious because I've never heard of um, the intricacies of starting an IPO. How big does a business have to be to be able to reach that? Because we know Gojek is already very big. Yes. Uh, it has to, it had to, you know, Goto actually had to merge first. Right. And then have the capacity to do an IPO. Well, perhaps they could have done it earlier, but they haven't. Yeah. Uh, Bukalapak also has quite the big, you know, uh, right. quite the big um, market right. share. And so, how big at least does a start uh, does a startup or a business have to be to be able to reach the IPO goal? Because you're basically self-sustaining and self-funding yeah. if you already have an IPO. Yeah, basically the government has um, uh, given actually a platform mm -hmm. for many startups actually to go IPO even though they're very small. So that's why if you look at the uh, the exchange, the stock exchange, they have you know, three levels, right? So this is the main board, mm -hmm. uh, the development board, and also the, actually the acceleration board. Now, acceleration board is usually for the startups. So even though if you are not profitable, mm -hmm. even though you're just new, actually, basically, the rules, you can have an IPO. Oh. Right. right. So that's why the government is actually giving the platform of different ways of funding. So instead of just going to venture capitalists mm -hmm. or, or going to the bank, so here's an option for you, given by the government with a new policy, so that even startups that is not making money actually can go for the IPO. Because we know the stock exchange is a very attractive place for traders as well. Right? Correct. So Correct. <laughs> <laughs> that should be tapped on. Well, yes. Babudi, thank you so much for your thank insight. You very much, I've learned so much, and I'm even becoming more excited to start IP, uh, to looking at IPOs now sure. and looking out for your also mentored IPOs. All right. Babudi, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Well, those were the business economics updates for this hour, but later in the next hour, I'll have more. Of course, Dirza will be back in just a little bit from the, for the latest from the world of sports. Make sure you stay tuned with us on the TR News Show. See you today.